guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. And oh my god, you guys give me so many good suggestions on uh, documentaries and movies and TV shows yesterday. Thank you so much. I screenshotted so many of those uh, those comments and I read every single one of those. So thank you guys so, so much for those. I'll let you know what I end up watching and what I like the most. Maybe I'll give a shout out to whoever suggested uh, that, uh, whatever, that movie or documentary uh, as well. So today I want to talk about my favorite champion in the game. For a long time, it was Miscreated Monster, and man, I love Miscreated Monster, but I gotta tell you, I am such a huge fan of Scylla Drakes, man. She is a daily login reward champion. What do you get her after, 190, I think? Is it the, it's 190. And uh, props to Flareon, right? Because they gave one of the better champions in the game as a free login reward champion. I wish they would do that more often, but I'm not going to complain because they did it once. The downside is, let me just throw it out there. The good news is she's a legendary and she's amazing and she's free after 190 days. The bad news is, is she does require books. And legendary books are so freaking difficult to get in this game. I mean, we'll get what? One free a month now with the advanced quest? It's not enough. It's not enough. But at the same time, at the end of the day, it still is an amazing legendary worth putting your legendary books in as hard as they are to earn. Today, I'm going to revisit this champion and talk about why I love her so much, guys. I think I'm going to show you her. I'll show you her real quick how I have her built. But after that, I just want to show you her with some like 100% free to play teams to see what she can do for your account, whether you're early game, mid game or late game. We'll even try her out in the arena as part of an all defense, non free to play team uh, to give you guys some ideas for tag team arena. So let's start off. Here she is. Silva Drake's man. Love this champion. I have her in a stun set, guys. I talked about this in my previous video on her and I stand by it, right? You can increase her chances of very close to landing a stun every single time if you add a stun set to her A2. Let's look at her A2 real quick. Wing beat Fe uh, Fe uh, Flurry, excuse me, I was going to say Fury. Flurry is on a three turn cooldown, attacks all enemies two times. Each hit has a 35% chance of placing a stun for one turn. So you get two shots at a 35% chance of landing that stun on a three turn cooldown when booked damage based off defense which we love to see. Now, if you want to go with Fearsome Presence, you can bump that up to a 40% chance each time. If you want to add a stun artifact set, it gives you extra insurance, if you will, 18 or 23% with Fearsome Presence at landing that stun off the artifact set as well. So listen, do you need it? If Especially if you go Fearsome Presence, do you need the stun set? No, you don't. You're probably still be going to be consistently consistently landing those stuns. But guys, I, I love her in this uh, kind of build. Uh, for progression especially, right? For progression, I think that this is hands down the best build. If you want her to put a little bit more damage out against bosses, of course you could kind of sacrifice the defense tree and go with offense and end off with War Master. Uh, put out more damage overall. Or if you're using her in Clan Boss up to maybe Brutal or so, uh, you can go ahead and use her there as well or use war master as well otherwise i like this setup ending with a uh, sniper and master hexer as we normally do so let's talk about uh well i'll just go through the gear real quick defense on the chest speed on the boots and crit damage if you can if you can on the gauntlets otherwise crit rate does just well uh you can see defense defense and accuracy are going to be big priorities on this champion i don't even have her accuracy or excuse me her crit rate high enough at 74 also speed is going to be a priority when you're building out this champion you don't have to have the same stats that I do. I have pretty decent gear on her, but just prioritize. Have a healthy level of defense. Her damage is based off defense anyway. It will give you extra sustainability on this champion. Have two, you know, if you're if you're going against level 20 dungeons, try to have 200 plus accuracy on this champion. If you're using her in arena, you know, you can't, there's no limit to the amount of accuracy you can have on this champion, right? And then try to build her to 100% crit rate if you can, okay? So that is how I have her built out though, but I just want to take her into some of these dungeons and talk about why she's my new favorite champion in the game even me right i have a bunch of legendaries man i am a, a, a unapologetic whale i guess you know in the sense that i do spend money on this game however 
you get her on daily log and reward anyway eventually, right? And she can help you, she just can help you so tremendously. I said free to play teams, I realize some people give me crap about having a cold heart and a pain keeper in a free to play team. I realize it's not 100% free to play, but it's, it's a more accessible team, right? No, you know, very difficult legendaries to get, no difficult epics to get on this team. Uh, so we'll see what she can do and we'll talk about her, right? So number one with this champion, uh, first and foremost, on her A1, she has Terminator Manipulation. I didn't even show you her A1, didn't really go over her kit, but she has the Revive. She has that stun that we talked about. And then she has Turn Meter on her A1 and she has a heal. Man, that's a lot to have in one champion's kit. And the beautiful thing, wait till I show you guys the Ice Golem team. It's almost like cheating when you have her and Bellower on the same team. We'll talk about why in just a second. But you can see she's going to do a good job on a three turn cooldown of just keeping everybody stunned all the time, right? I mean, tremendous, tremendous. On, on this team, the way it works here is we have Kale kind of in the lead because he's the only champion with a decent aura on this team. We have Coltart to do the damage once we get to the dragon. Kale's going to help out with his poison against the dragon. We have Painkeeper to help keep everybody alive and with her uh, combat tactics kind of reduce the, uh, the the cooldown of our skills. We have Warp Maiden as our debuffer and kind of our secondary nuker on the team. And then we have Scylla the Drakes as our support. Oh, we lost Coltart. No big deal. She's alive again. Oh, she's down on damage. No big deal. We'll heal her up every single time vis-a-vis -vis our passive, right? You see why I love this champion? You see why I love her, guys? She's so strong. And again, even if we lose that Coltar, it's not the end of the world. Between the heals, between the revival, we're going to be just fine. You know, as long as we keep Solo the Drakes alive, we'll be looking pretty good. And we get to the dragon about 121. Again, this team... It's just really, really solid. And if you don't have Coltart, no big deal. Just sub in a different damage dealer for Coltart. If everybody should have War Maiden, everybody should have Kale. And then Painkeeper, just put any put Apothecary in there. That's fine. Totally fine. Apothecary out. I mean, uh, Painkeeper out, Apothecary in. You'll have the extra speed, and you'll have the heals on Apothecary. So that's just absolutely fine. Heck, this team could even be better with Apothecary instead of Painkeeper in there. So you really have some flexibility on a team like this. I was reading the comments for the movie and the TV suggestions yesterday, and a few of you guys were like, dude, I don't mind if you include X, Y, or Z champion, but include some substitutions. I hear you loud and clear. We'll make sure I do that in all videos, you know, going forward. So here we go, land us some poisons. It's going to be about a 2 minute and 15 second, 2 minute and 20 second dragon run. Every time the HP gets a little bit of low, no big deal. We get the heals coming down from Painkeeper and from Sil of the Drake's passive. She also has that passive where you can see she's putting the increased speed buff also on two random allies every turn. Not too bad, right? I think it's only for one turn, uh, but there it goes. Maybe two turns? I don't know. I saw it for two turns on uh, Painkeeper. Either way, guys, let's sell these boots and move on to the next dungeon. Two minutes, 23 seconds. Not too bad, right? And I have uh, not amazing gear on any of the other champions on this team, with the exception of Coldheart. Uh, okay, let's go to Ice Golem. Check this out, guys. So, I have one epic on this team, I believe. Uh, yes, I have Stagnite there for my decreased defense. Uh, if you have Tyrell, heck, even if you have, I mean, the, the crappy thing about Ice Golem is, is especially once you get to like stage 18, 19, 20, you need a decreased defense on your team, right? In War Maiden, the free to play friendly decreased defense is not that great, especially at stage 20 because it's, it's force against spirit affinity. So I needed to kind of use Stagnite in here so I had some sort of defense down. Hopefully you have Tyrell or Stagnite or legendary defense down champion, uh, but you're going to see how, like I said, it's almost like cheating here. Between Bellower and a stun set, and he has an AoE every single one of his abilities, as you guys know, in between every three turns Sill the Drake having that close to 100% stun to land, the enemies are really never going to get a chance to go, you know, and that includes the two minions of the Ice Golem himself. So a team like this is relatively accessible, and it's all because of Sill the Drakes. She is one of the best crowd control with that AoE three turn stun. And you can see it right there again. Or did she do it? She did not do it. Eh, I don't think she did it there. I don't think she did it yet. It might be the next turn. But Bellower is like, I got you. I got you. I got you, man. And, you know, it's so difficult getting by. And you can see we might lose somebody right here. We almost lose Coltar there. Apothecary steps in with a spot heal. Thank you very much. But still, even though they were able to get the Reflect up, it's still not the end of the world as long as we don't lose Scylla the Drakes herself, right? And Apothecary says, no big deal. I'll heal her back up. That's how you pass that second wave, which can be challenging using a team like this. Now, again, we can stun both of the minions, prevent that defense down AoE from going down, and we'll be looking really good with this team. 
Bellower landed a stun on the right minion. He's the one who does the AoE defense down, I believe. And again, we can just kind of, it's not going to be the fastest run in the world. And you can see Coltart kind of clinging on to life there. But we have two healers on the team between Apothecary and, uh, and uh, Scylla the Drakes. She didn't have heal reduction. Now she gets the spot heal from Apothecary. And again, this team is, you know... We don't have any, I guess Coltart is my huge nuker, but we don't have any huge, huge nukers on this team. You can use Royal Guard in the place of Coltart. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's just, it's solid, right? And this is why I love her so much. Teams like this would have been very, very tricky uh, without God tier gear before Sill of the Drakes. And now you have her, and I think she just lends a lot of utility overall. Are you guys with me? Do you guys use Scylla the Drakes? I have all these amazing champions, some of the most difficult champions to get in the game. That's not a humble brag, it's just a fact, right? Because, again, done a lot of shard opening videos. Let's not lie, right? Let's not kid ourselves here. But at the same time, I still use Scylla the Drakes because, for me, if I'm farming overnight, if I'm using my auto battles, whatever, dependability is the biggest factor for me. I don't care if I'm beating the Ice Golem in in one minute or in three minutes. It doesn't matter to me because I don't have unlimited energy. So as long as I'm staying alive, which is possible with Sill of the Drakes. Now this is not my main Ice Golem team. That wasn't my main Dragons team. I'm showing you a little bit of weaker teams, a little bit more of realistic teams for you guys to use. But you guys get it. I mean, it's just, it's solid with all of these big hits from the Ice Golem. We're staying alive here. Again, keeping those minions stunned. And this is why I love her. I'll show you a quick uh, uh, spider team. I don't have an HP burn champion who's non-legendary built out right now, unfortunately, guys. So I can't show you kind of how she, she synergizes with an HP burn team. But think of it like this. When you're going with the HP burn strategy against the spider, you want to keep all the spiderlings alive with HP burn and stunned. That way it does a bunch of ticks of damage per HP burn tick to the mother spider. Does that make sense? You guys get me. So that's what you want to do. I don't, again, have a good HP burn champion, so I'm just going to nuke the spider down. But essentially, Scylla the Drakes can be used as kind of a miscreated monster substitute for spiders if you don't have a miscreated monster. Essentially, somebody who's going to both stun and support, keep your uh, champions alive. Because she can do the stun on the AoE on the A2, and she can do the support off of her heals, off of her revival as well. So I'm just going to bring her into kind of a random team, and we'll do a quick, like, one-minute run, and just kind of show how that works and I'll show you a quick arena battle and that will be the video so let me know guys do you think I overhype Scylla the Drakes let me know in the comments below it could very well be the case but I love her I really do and again Plarium ought to do this more often right and I provided this feedback to them along with a bunch of the other content creators. They always say this stuff, man. These guys are in the community are constantly advocating for you guys, you know. But, you know, one of the recent points that I made was, you know, you made Frozen Banshee and Grave Chill Killer. Those are two solid rare champions. Make more good rares, man. Make more good rares. I've talked about this before, but that will keep people playing and spending longer, even from Plarium's point of view. This team, we'll see how they do. We'll see how this team does. Uh, there's a chance we could die here. We'll see, though. Just because I usually run it with Miscreated Monster in the place of Scylla the Drakes. I'm not sure if she'll be able to keep the, uh, she didn't kill those spiders. Coltart steps in and almost kills them. We'll see. We'll just see if my Royal Guards and Coltarts can go before the spider can kill us all. Coltart clinging on to life on the left-hand side. We got Draco Morph asleep. And again, this is not the ideal. And again, Draco Morph is certainly not free-to-play friendly. But, but the idea here is you pair her with a more, uh, you pair her with another stun champion, or, uh, yeah, two stun champions and an HP burn champion, and you can just HP burn the spider down, especially if you don't have multiple cold hearts, especially if you don't have miscreated monster, if you don't have any of these power, Septimus, any of these big power spider champions. I think Royal Guard will actually end this out. I think he has his, uh, takedown ability next, I think, hopefully. Let's see. Boom, there it goes. So we do survive there uh, in under a minute, but still, it doesn't really matter. It's just, you know, kind of whatever. I probably shouldn't have included that battle, but you guys get the point anyway. Let's go ahead and do one arena battle, and I told you guys, I warned you, this is not a free-to-play team, but just kind of giving you ideas at what you can do uh, with a, a defense team in the best of beauty of it, right? She's defense-based, 
So you put her with a bunch of champions who are also defense-based damage. You put her with a defense up uh, buffer on your team. If you wanted to do this for like a silver or a gold league uh, tag team arena team, it's not a speed farming team at all, guys. If you want a speed farming team for regular arena, just run, you know, a speed lead, skull crown, whoever, Gorgorab, and just kind of build a team around them and just, you know, debuff nuke, debuff nuke, debuff nuke. This is more for tag team if you want to build a defense team or just kind of try something new out inside the arena. So we have a high resist because uh, we have Razin in the lead. We have Silva Drakes for some defensive kind of quasi nukage and for some CC on the stun. We have Valkyrie whose damage is based off of defense and has an OP shield. And we have Siffy who's just the best uh, champion in the game. So I'll do a couple quick arena battles just kind of show you how it works here. We're not going to go first. So we have to make sure that Biggin doesn't kill all of us. But we're all defense based champions here except for Siffy. But it doesn't. Oh, we, we might lose. Let's see. Let's see. So I want her to. Meh. Okay. That could work out. I think we'll still win this one. Yeah, it's beautiful too because you can see the double revival and what kind of synergy that has on this team. And now that we get those buffs up to increase defense, this one's pretty much over. Sometimes, you know, you're, you're, well, not all the time, you're not going to go first on a defense-based team. So just be aware of that. But having two or even three revivers on a team like this makes it very, very strong. And now we should be just killing Arbiter, but I have it on auto attack, so we're not. Of course, we're going after Seeker instead. It's okay, though. Eventually, we will kill them. Once this team gets going a team like this right any deep a strong defense based team especially with a valkyrie or a shield champion in there or a sir nicholas or something like that you can also use a man eater for kind of an unkillable idea uh but once we withstand the first shot of the opposite team we're good to go you know nine times out of ten we're absolutely fine let's go after this team here and uh, we'll see it again in action so they're gonna go first tornado goes down we get true fear down we have a Ceres, we have an Arbiter, we have a Rotos, but again, we get that shield up from Valkyrie, and now with True Fear on, or Fear, I should say, on my Silver the Drake, she's not going to get the AoE stun down, unfortunately, but you can see how she complements a team like this. She synergizes really well with the increased defense buff, obviously, and there it goes again. Now, that's uh, just Rotos being Rotos there. You're not going to take down your bride on my team, though, dude. And there it goes. Stun landed, tons of damage. Not too bad, right? She's the MVP of this fight. <laughs> Got the finishing blow on a couple of those champions. This is why I love Sil the Drakes, guys. What do you think? Do you love this champion too? Let me know in the comments below. She's my number one favorite champion in the game. Thank you guys for watching all the way till the end of the video. I hope you have an amazing weekend. And as always, take care, guys.